You are listening to Lone Star Community Radio on 104.5 KCZWLP Conroe and 106.1 KZCCLP Conroe and worldwide on IRLoneStar.com. Trick or treat, Lone Star Radio listeners. This is Dick, the general manager, taking this quick moment to remind you that Lone Star Community Radio is looking to fill some of our talk show slots along with some of our DJ slots. We have a new show airing on the 10th, Making Connections with Stacey Harris, which will air every second Tuesday of the month at 1 p.m. Make sure to check it out along with our other programs on Lone Star Community Radio. For more information on Lone Star Community Radio, visit us online at IRLoneStar.com. And again, if you're interested in doing something with us, Call the station, 936-647-3776. Thanks for checking out this recording, and I hope you guys enjoy. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. You are listening to Jake from Sports Talk here on IRLoneStar.com or Conroe's FM 104.5, 106.1, and worldwide on. I already said that part, didn't I? IRLoneStar.com. Welcome back in. I am your host, Jake LaFleur. It is another beautiful Wednesday. It's one of those days outside where you want to just tell your boss to go bleep himself because you want to be outside golfing because it's so beautiful. I think right now it's it's like 80 something degrees out. It is gorgeous. It's sunny, sunny, not a cloud in the sky, man. I, I really wish I was out on the links right now, but uh, yeah, unfortunately, my boss is not very nice and we're going to talk to him today here on the show. We're going to get into a little bit of soccer talk later in the show and we're going to talk about how pathetic disappointing, disgraceful this U.S. soccer team is that we we are throwing out there on the pitch, as the soccer freaks say. But, uh, yeah, no, glad to have you all in. Anyways, back to the show, the good stuff. Don't forget to follow the show on the social media platforms, including Facebook, and like and subscribe to the podcast versions of the show on Google Play, iTunes, and, of course, YouTube, where you can always see this beautiful, sexy face talking to you about the sports and the sports world and everything that goes with it. Glad to have you in live, though, if you are listening right now. And, uh, yeah, let's get let's just dive into the show. Let, let's go. Let, we got a lot to cover today, uh, all the way from Golden Knights to NFL and the continuing kneeling saga nonsense that's going on and how Jerry Jones is, you know, planting his little, his little flag in there. Uh, and then, yeah, can't forget about that white powdery substance that's keeping the sports world a buzz. We got to do it, man. Got to do it. So let's get started, as always, with a week and a wrap. All right, guys. First things first, MLB playoffs. We're going to talk a little bit that about that deeper uh, later in one of the segments. Uh, but news coming out of Boston this morning. Out of Boston. I said that with a, I threw my, my northeastern accent there. Out of Boston. John Farrell uh, has been let go as the manager of the Boston Red Sox after his fifth year of managing the team. He led the team to a World Series in 2013 in his first year as manager, first one to do that in Red Sox history. He's also the first manager in franchise history to win back-to-back division titles. I did not know that prior to, to reading that this morning. I didn't realize that the Red Sox have never— well. They've won back-to-back franchise title or division titles, but this is the first manager to do it uh, and manage the team both years, obviously. And then, uh, but the last two years, he, um, yeah, no, just fell short. Fell short in the uh, ALDS and couldn't get his players to just. They they looked unmotivated. They looked unenthused, unenthusiastic about being in the playoffs. You saw a little heart and pride come out of there at the end of the uh, game four against the Astros, and and bravo to the Astros. They they played a great series, and I really do believe they're the team to come out of the American League uh, right now. The pitching situation going on in uh, with both of the the Indians and the Yankees, I, I don't think either of those staffs are going to be able to shut down the Astros for a seven game series. Um, so, but well, like I said, we'll, we'll dive into that. Uh, on the Farrell topic, though, I think this is a good thing for the franchise. Change is sometimes good, and I know he's the uh, third time, third all-time uh, leading manager in Red Sox history as far as 
playoff appearances, third all-time in division titles, and uh, sixth all-time in uh, championships. But that's kind of, you know, deflated in, in a certain way. But I, I think that that what you saw when they let go of Terry Francona, it was a, hey, we don't think this is working out. We don't think that you're getting the same prog- uh, progress and the same you know leadership ability out of your, your players. So we're going to go ahead and make the change up. Two years in a row, spending all that money on Chris Sale, spending all that money on David Price, that it, it didn't translate well and not getting the best performances out of those two guys. Now, this was Sale's first time ever to pitch in a postseason. He looked really tired, really tired, and just didn't have his A game. He was having trouble locating uh, pitches in the strike zone, even coming out of the bullpen. Price looked much better out of the bullpen, and we got a really two good performances out of him in the playoffs, but uh, we, that's not his role. That's not what we brought him into Boston to do. We wanted him to be that one-two punch uh, with whomever that we were going to put or that the Red Sox were going to put side-by-side side with him. So... Maybe we can get somebody in, like a Francona, that, that that's a players' coach that that players just love to play. They get up every day for that manager for every game. They get up for him, and we'll, we'll see wh- who they bring in. It's gonna be it's gonna be a highly sought after job, and uh, you know we'll see where the the dominoes fall. I don't think Farrell's gonna uh, see any trouble getting a new job, and I'm glad the Red Sox did this early. They're allowing Farrell to get the opportunity to go out there and and not have to draw this out into this this giant saga that they're going to allow it to play out you know quickly and precisely. The Red Sox can move on, start looking for their next manager, and Farrell can move on, start looking for his next managing position. Don't be shocked if if John ends up in Philadelphia uh, or even you know depending on what happens in New York, you could very well see uh, New York's manager out and Farrell going up there and. Replacing him, which would be an interesting conundrum, and in, in all all things, you know how it plays out. I'll be curious to see what Farrell um, what Farrell has to say to the media. Uh, he's he's quiet at, up to this point. It's only been a few hours, so you know, I'm sure he's getting his ducks in a row. And you know, I'll be curious to see what he says when he finally does speak to the media. So, uh, quick player update: injuries in the NFL. Giants are done. They're probably going to go 0-16. And, and as a Giants fan, that's very hard to say. But, yeah, that's not a good situation. They basically lost their season in injury form in one game. Uh, they saw uh, Sterling Shepard go down with a high ankle sprain. He is expected to play this weekend. But how productive is he going to be? And he's he went from number two slash number three wide receiver on that squad to now uh, the one uh, because of fractured. Uh, Dwayne Harris went down with a fractured foot, which is that hurts our special teams as well. He was their punt returner, their kick returner. So we're going to have to see what goes on there. You got Brandon Marshall season ending ankle injury yesterday. And then worst of all, obviously Odell Beckham jr. Out for the season with a broken ankle. He had ankle surgery as well. Um, I believe that was uh, either late Late Monday night or early Tuesday morning. I don't remember exactly when he had it. Uh, and then Texans, man, uh, to see your defense just get you know picked apart uh, on the field by Alex Smith and, and the Chiefs. And and kudos to the Texans if they had any. If I think if their defense was full and healthy, I think they could have beaten the Chiefs. Their offense played really well, and it was a close game. But but then to see your defense, two biggest players go down. With J.J. Watt in the broken leg, and then Whitney Merciless with a torn pectoral muscle, both done for the season. Uh, it's going to be, it's going to be challenging. We'll have to see. They, I think they can still win the division. Obviously, we can tell that the the Jaguars aren't consistent enough right now. Um, they, they put a good performance together this past weekend against the Steelers. But then the weekend before that, they got killed, and it, it just seems to be that that one week they do great, one week they do bad. Um, Mariota is out this week, and it could have been another two to three weeks before he gets that hamstring back and healthy. And I think they're doing the right thing. Why rush him back? He he is naturally a mobile quarterback. Let him rest. Let him heal. Let him come back stronger, better than ever. But that's going to raise some huge questions out there in, in Tennessee. And and can they put together enough of a of a run game to allow their you know shady passing offense? Now I mean, man, I've got their tight end in fantasy, and it is. It is hard, 
hard, hard, hard to watch that passing offense without Mariota and without the mobility of that uh, of that quarterback at that quarterback position. Uh, another quarterback that was out last week. He's back this week. He's got a, a slight fracture. Uh, it's Derek Carr. What, what's the? It's a transverse fracture. I needed your your girlfriend, Dick, to tell me what a transverse fracture is. I don't I don't know what a transverse means, but it's it's on his lower back. It, it's one on one of the um, one of the discs in his lower back. He's likely at this point to play against the Chargers this upcoming weekend, and that's another one. That that's that's another quarterback situation that the um, the team really relies on. Their offense relies on it. They they, they had no no mobile or not mobile, but no um, what's the word I'm looking for? Functionality in their offense essentially against the Ravens this past weekend. So uh, we'll, we'll see if he's back. We'll see what kind of performance he can put together if he can withstand the hits. Luckily, they are playing the Chargers, who are now 1-4 and four instead of 0-5 because they did beat the uh, Giants this past weekend. But, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see how that goes. We'll see how Carr plays and everything like that. I hope he makes a full recovery. He's a great quarterback. He's a great young young face and young leader in this team or in this league, and I think the league itself needs more of those situations. And those players like J.J. Watt, like Derek Carr, like Mariota to stay on the field and, and you know, help the imaging of this league because man they are going down hill and it is not pretty uh, on hockey news we're gonna get i'm gonna apologize here in a second but before we get to that part uh alex ovechkin ovechkin sorry first player since the conception of the modern nhl which i think dates back to like the middle of the 60s uh and the first player since 1917 1918 season so 100 years ago uh, he's the first player to open the season with back-to-back hat, tr- hat tricks to help the Capitals open uh, the season with two wins. Uh, you know, it, it, the, the Capitals are a lot like the uh, Nationals. All, you know, those D.C. teams just, they have great regular seasons, but man, when it comes to post- postseason play, they look like dog do do uh, And they'll end up losing to the Pittsburgh Penguins again in the playoffs, and, and all this will be mute and, you know, null and void. But good for Ovechkin. He's, he's a good player. A lazy player, but a good player. Uh, and then the NFL protest is overflowing now into the NHL with the Tampa Bay Lightning forward JT Brown raising a fist during the national anthem on Saturday. Uh, JT came out and said that he's receiving death threats from this. Uh, and, and Dick, did you say you heard that some NFL players were, were getting death threats? I, I mean, I don't know. If- Sources, but I just remember that's what was starting, especially was, Kaepernick. I mean, I thought Kaepernick well, was. Well, no, I know Kaepernick was back when when he first started it. He was, yeah, yeah. But uh, I don't think anything. I don't think any death threats have come this year. Oh, okay, but I, I, I mean, I could be wrong. I just haven't heard um, anything on that. But to see to see a hockey player, and, and it, you know what was funny? The story didn't mention what he was protesting. It didn't mention if he was if he was in line with the protests of the NFL players or anything like that. So I, I, I don't know what he was protesting. I was researching it, trying to figure out what he was protesting. It didn't say anything. He was just protesting during the national anthem. And again, athletes out there, you know, if you're going to protest, at least have a message that you can be consistent on. So, um, and then I, I do want to apologize. Last week, I did not mention at all the Las Vegas shooting and the tragedy that, that occurred on October 1st. And I, I apologize. I apologize for not sharing out my sympathies uh, with the victims and the victims' families and everything like that. I use sports as a way of distraction in my life, and I know there's many others out there, all basically all sports fans, but agree that, that we use dis- sports as a distraction from hard times, not, not just in a national sense like like what we had with the senseless shooting and the senseless violence on, on October 1st but also you know from from daily life struggles from hey man I got you know five hundred dollars left in my bank account how am I gonna make it for two weeks you know I, I I use sports I use that as a way to distract myself from that sort of situation and other stuff you know people get in car accidents and it's you know, life happens and life sucks at times but you know sports is is a good way to to kind of just mindlessly numb our brains from from the hardships that we face on a day-to-day basis, and 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 especially when it comes to these national tragedies, the, the hurricanes, um, and then like I said, the, the senseless violence that that occurred in Las Vegas. And for all those in Las Vegas, I, I my heart goes out to you. 
Um, if I got any listeners in there, message me on Facebook at Jake from Sports Talk. Let me know that you're listening in. Let me know that you like the show. And, and again, I, I do apologize for all the Las Vegans and or I don't know how to, how to appropriately Las Vegas ites, <laughs> if you will, whatever the case may be. It's it's hard to to look at, at a situation like that and then kind of think how are we going to talk sports? But you know, we're I enjoy being goofy and silly in in times of trouble and in times of of hardship because I like the lighter side of of life and and I you know I can find the 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 good in every situation. And so with that said, I got to say the good that came from the sports world and what we saw on October 1st was last night, the Golden Knights, after starting 0-2, or 0-2, sorry, after starting 2-0 and on their season, beating the Dallas Stars 2-1 to in their season, in their inaugural season opener, and then going down to Arizona and winning on the road 2-1 to in overtime, they came home and they played their inaugural uh, season opener in their home, you know, home opener, and that was an awesome sight to see overall. Uh, the pregame ceremony that that PR staff and that stadium put on was incredible. I, I, I was watching it on television. It was a late start, which was you know beneficial to me, uh, but it was truly a, a. I was sitting on the couch and I I, I was moved uh, watching it, and and it was a lot of fun. I I, I got to give them props. They they had a fifty eight second moment of silence, one one second for each victim. They had uh they had stars of the or they had the team players come out and they were joined by uh super uh, what am i trying to think of the heroes that from that day from october 1st i was going to say superheroes and they they are they are you know real life superheroes and then uh they had uh, members of the crew that were working the venue come out and sing the national anthem they had uh on the ice they had a uh, light shining down on top of the ice with each victim's name on there. A really cool video to go with it. Uh, yeah, just all together, just incredible, incredible opening ceremony and an incredible way to honor all those who were hurt and killed in October 1st, uh, you know, tragic event. And then in addition to that, they came out and they played an awesome game of hockey. They put up four goals in the first and uh, they ended up winning five to two in the final, and to like I said, bring it back to a silly side of things because I am silly. It's what I do. I do not like the fact that they're the Golden Knights. Like, just make them the Las Vegas Knights. Like, why do they have to be golden? I understand that that glitz and gold and glamour is Las Vegas, but mm, ah, just make them the Knights. It's so frustrating. All right. On that note, we're gonna come back from the break, but stay tuned. Because when we do come back, we're going to talk about some white powdery stuff on a coach's desk. I'm excited. You are listening to Jake from Sports Talk here on 104.5, 106.1, and worldwide on IRLoneStar.com. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back, ladies and gentlemen. Listen in Mondays at noon to hear Conroe news from local nonprofits, businesses, upcoming events, Conroe Park events, news stories, and information that matters to you with your host, Margie Taylor of Taylorized PR. For more information about being a guest, visit IRLoneStar.com slash Conroe Culture. Don't forget to download the Lone Star Community Radio app for your Google Play or Apple Store. Bring Montgomery County's community radio with you anywhere with your smartphone or tablet. If you are in the Conroe area, tune in on FM. That is Conroe's FM 104.5, 106.1. Hey, welcome back to Jake from Sports Talk here on Lone Star Community Radio. Uh, coming to you from the Lone Star Community Radio studios on uh, Main Street in downtown beautiful Conroe. And it is truly a beautiful day outside. Glad to have you all in. I hope you're not working too hard on a Wednesday and it is home day. I don't think people do that anymore, but, you know, I'm going to throw it out there because I like it. I like the camel. The camel's my friend. So as I teased before we went to break, we are going to talk about some white powdery substance and a coach and how that infects the... Miami Dolphins. So if you not 
heard this story yet. And you don't even have to be a sports fan to hear this story. This is kind of blown up in all realms of news media. But it, just in case you haven't heard the story, uh, last week there was a video that surfaced of the offensive line coach for the Miami Dolphins snorting a white powdery substance through a dollar bill. And the video was leaked out by a Nevada model named Kiwana Nige. Nige is probably, I don't know how to pronounce it. It's N-I-G-E. Nige is probably how you pronounce it. I don't know. Maybe Nige. Who knows? But uh, Is this for Google purposes? You're trying to tell people? Yeah. Look her up. Yeah, look her up. Because there's, uh, there's some developments that keep coming out little bit by little bit. And this woman is... Uh, it, this whole story is kind of garbage media. But the U.S. now, and I'm sure it's probably not just a U.S. thing. I'm sure it's a world thing. But, man, people today just love, love garbage media and how much garbage news attracts the viewers and the readers and everything. It's 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 glorious. I mean, because I like to sit back and laugh at these sort of situations and these stories because here you have a a, a – Offensive line coach for a professional football team in the NFL, the biggest league in the world, confessing his love over this video as he snorts lines of white powdery substances and talks and mentions about a baby and sends it out to this woman. This woman leaks it out to the public and he he gets let go by the Dolphins. I mean, rightfully so, right? More so... I, I, I don't think, you know, I really don't even think he would have gotten in trouble if he, if like they had found out that he was doing cocaine, but like nobody knew about it. I, I'm sure the team would be like, yeah, just don't do any more cocaine, you know, or, or white powdery substance, whatever the white powdery substance was. I'm sure they would just be like, yeah, just don't do it because we don't want it to come, you know, become public knowledge because once it becomes public knowledge, then they would have to let him go. So to put it out into the public like he did, I mean, that's just not very smart on his part and whatnot, but... It's comical because the reason why this Miss Niche came out and said that the reason why she leaked this video was because she wanted to do it in, in an activist sort of fashion. And she wanted to do it in support of Colin Kaepernick. And she has just already come out and basically threatened saying, if I don't. Or if Colin Kaepernick doesn't get fair treatment in the NFL, whatever her definition of fair is, I don't want to. I, I can't even imagine what that definition of fair is. But if she, if Colin Kaepernick gets fair treatment, then she will not leak out any more videos. And it's not of this coach because she specifically said she could take down the whole infrastructure if she wanted to. This one Nevada model could take down the whole infrastructure of the NFL. I find that rather hard to believe, but if it is true, like if there's just a network of Army Nevada models that just have tons of videos of various ESPN, or not, sorry, not ESPN, NFL execs, coaches, players, doing just various bad things, that would be the greatest reality show of all time. Just like, one video a week until Colin Kaepernick gets rehired in the NFL. It's like the WikiLeaks thing all over again <laughs> yeah, from the campaign. But it's led by Nevada models, not Russia, which is just, oh, it's glorious. It, it's it's really comical. It's comical to, to sit back and, and to report in on this. And now she she was contacted by um, by a show on ESPN. And they were trying to get her to come on and be the first, per, you know, first group to talk to her and get her side of the story and everything like that. And she basically told their, their producing staff, the, the people that contacted her, she said, well, I'm currently in, in negotiations with uh, Dr. Phil and I'm going to share my story with one news source and one news source only. And it's basically going to go out to the high, highest bidder. Well, you know, that kind of hurts the... Um, the justice or what, what you know that kind of hurts the the cause of why you're doing this whole thing uh but yeah so she she basically told him no because you're not going to be able to beat dr phil money 
And then she turns around this morning and she ends up, they end up getting her to come on the show free of charge. Allegedly, we'll, we'll find out if that's true or not, but allegedly free of charge. And she tells the whole story, the whole situation of, of, you know, how she met the guy all the way through uh, the leaking of the video. And she said, you know, from the very get go, she saw how interested this guy was in her. And she knew right then and there she was going to use him to exploit him and to exploit the NFL into basically getting Colin Kaepernick a job. And uh, it, it, she she used very colorful language. I wish I could replay the video here, the interview here for you guys, but she used very colorful language, and I just don't think it'd be appropriate on this radio. But uh, if you get a chance, if you get an opportunity, not at work, not on a work computer, not on work Wi-Fi, do it at home. <laughs> Go and, and look up the interview that she did with the Dan Lebetard show with its two guts. It's uh, based out of Miami. Uh, they, it's a, uh, it's, it's, it's a war. It's worth listening to. It's a great, great video. Um, but yeah, so I, I want to hear what the coach has to say. I want to hear if I, I'm tired of having to use the, uh, the terminology white powdery substance. She did say, however, in in the interview, she did say that he, uh, did ask to use cocaine off of her body. And so, and then she said, in addition, that she herself has never used cocaine. So we got a Nevada model never using cocaine, denying a Dolphins NFL coach uh, the right to or the ability to uh, do cocaine off of her body, all coming out because he sent a video of him snorting white powdery substance uh, off of his desk at work through a dollar bill and then sending it to her while confessing his love. And, and, you know, Dick, we were talking about this the other day on the morning show uh, that Dick and Skippy have here at Lone Star Community Radio. I've got the opportunity to listen to it. It's a great show. And occasionally I'm on there. Um, so plug me there as well. But uh, we were talking about this on one of the morning shows and you had a great way he could back out of this, like he, or a, a way that you think he could overcome this. Do you remember what it was? No. No? You don't remember? We recorded it, though, so I can just go back into our records. <laughs> you said he should just lie through his teeth and say that, like, he was sending it oh, to a buddy. Oh, yeah. And it was... Oh, yeah. So, do you really think that would work? Like, sending... Just well, saying... no, what I say, what you should do, it's one of those practical jokes you send to each other as buddies, and it's like, you know, he could just be making a, a funny, like, it's a kind of thing, like, oh, doing drugs, haha, just kidding. And, and, and not like he's really confessing his love to any particular woman. Yeah, because like, well, that's what's so strange about it is if you if you do list if you read the transcript and look at his behavior, it, you could interpret it as like a parody, like he's making a joke video. But then again, that's what makes it even more hilarious is if it's serious because you're like, man, is this guy, what's this guy like? Because <laughs> I mean, behind an, closed doors, this is what this guy's like. You're an offensive line coach, and it was right before a meeting, too. Yeah. So I can't even imagine what those meetings were like. Man, talk about, like, oof, inspiration right yeah. there. Just, ugh, Hulk, Hulk mania. You won't like me when I'm angry. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Enough silliness with that nonsense. We're going to uh, take a quick break, half our bottom of the hour break right now here on uh, Jake from Sports Talk. When we come back, we're going to talk... MLB playoffs, if we get enough time, I want to highlight a few games coming up this week from the NCAA and the NFL, but we'll see MLB playoffs right now are more important. Stay tuned. We'll be back in just a moment. The Texas A&M AgriLife Extension Service has been dedicated to educating Texans for over a century. In 1915, the Extension Program was established under the federal Smith-Lever Act to deliver university knowledge and agricultural research findings directly to the people. Ever since, AgriLife Extension Programs have addressed the emerging issues of the day, serving diverse populations across the state. Texans turn to Extension for solutions in horticulture, agriculture, 4-H and youth, and family and consumer sciences. Extension agents respond not only with answers, but also with resources and services that result in significant returns on investment to boost the economy. Join us Fridays at 1 o'clock for the AgriLife Extension Hour. A Lone Star Community Radio is Montgomery County's radio station with talk, 
music, weather, and traffic for Montgomery County. Have a question or comment about one of our shows? Want to know how to reach a host? Just contact the station at IRLoneStar.com or call in and leave a message at 936-647-3776. Get involved with your community with Lone Star Community Radio. Welcome back to Jake from Sports Talk here on Lone Star Community Radio, IRLoneStar.com, 104.5, 106.1 if you're in the greater Montgomery County area. Guys, don't forget, if you miss any part of the show, you can go watch the replayed version on YouTube and see how beautiful I truly am. Or if you just like the sound of my voice so much and you just want to hear it nonstop, go go subscribe, go follow, go like to the SoundCloud, or not SoundCloud, iTunes and Google Play, and you can get the free podcasted version. You can always listen to me nonstop. You can just put it on loop. Just every episode I got up on there, just just put it on a loop, constantly play it, you know. Get get Jake's voice in your ears 24-7. So beautiful. What can I say? Uh, I got a message, though, in on Facebook, and I got a question about where is Money Bag Mike's? And unfortunately, uh, he is he is missing in action, MIA. We have no clue where he is. I've contacted him multiple times in the last week. I have not heard back from him. Uh, so currently he is on my he, he, I'm not wearing a Bucks jersey now because that's two weeks in a row he's missed so he, he he missed out on his opportunity to see me in a Bucks jersey that's his fault not mine uh, those watching on uh, YouTube or on uh, RC TV here in the greater Montgomery County area sorry you're not going to see me in a Bucks jersey I know that might have been glorious but oh well all right like I said we're going to talk uh, MLB playoffs right now. And so far, I am accurate on all of my predictions. Astros in four, uh, L.A. in three, and the only one I am wrong on at this point is I had Cleveland in four, and it really should have been four, but they kind of got, Yankees got really lucky um, in just a a bad pitching performance by Bauer, who has been a rock-solid pitcher all year for the Indians. So they go into game five tonight. It's winner take all, um, winner go home, or yeah, winner go home uh, situation for for both of these uh, ball clubs. And I I, I got to imagine Cleveland at home, if they can just execute pitches, they can stave off the Yankees bombers and the baby bombers as they like to call them. Um, and I think you can. I, I think that the Indians will get the win tonight. Uh, I, I was wrong in the sense that it just it's going to take one extra game. Although I, as an if I'm an Astros fan and I'm looking at this situation overall, I'm thinking I kind of want the the Yankees batting and just from a pitching standpoint, matchup wise, I, I I think the Yankees or the Astros would fare better with the Yankees facing the Yankees, um, and I say that hesitantly because going into the playoffs, I, I that's what I thought from the get go. That was my my solid belief going into this playoffs with with the Astros. Going into the Red Sox, I thought that was their best match that they could have possibly gotten. Um, the pitching of the uh, Red Sox was just been so inconsistent all year long. They've had months where they've been great. Month of September, I think their, their total starting pitching staff had an ERA below 1.3. Um, you know, but then right there at the end, right getting into October, the nitty gritty of it, it was like, what the heck just happened? Their their pitching fell apart, and it, it's just been. It's been shady, and then the inconsistency on the offensive offensive side, and I think all that's what led to Farrell getting fired. And so I thought that was the best matchup for the Astros. And being in the greater Houston area, I mean, you know, I, I do root for the Astros. I do hope they do well. But when it comes down to Astros versus Red Sox, I'm going to pick Red Sox every day of the week. But now that we're we're, we're beyond that point, I am going to hop on the Astros bandwagon, and I'm going to I'm I'm think I'm rooting for them to win the whole thing this year. Uh, but. You know, I got to be honest. I, I think the Yankees matchup it would be a better one for the Astros rather than facing the Indians. Now, in addition to that, also, Astros would get home field advantage in that case. And you know, I, I, not that I think it really matters. I think I, Astros played better on the road this year than they did at home, anyways. But still, in a seven-game series, that that can come into a factor. But I don't think it actually matters. I really don't think it actually matters. I think the Indians win tonight, and then I think they go and they start the series. Whoever wins tonight, they start the series this upcoming Friday, 
and it'll depend on where they where they play game one at and whatnot like that. But um, I think whoever wins tonight, whether it be the uh, the Indians or the Yankees, I think the Astros can beat both of those ball clubs in a seven game series. I think if they play the Yankees, I think it's a shorter series. I think it's five games probably. If they play the um, if they play the Indians, I think that's what it, you'll see it go six games, maybe even seven. Uh, but I think no matter what, I think the Astros uh, pull out a win uh, in the ALCS and make it to another World Series, which would be awesome for this city after the whole Harvey situation and everything like that. And, you know, that's going back to like where sports come into being bigger and being more than just sports, like what you see in Las Vegas and, and how well the Knights did there. And and, and it, it's it's interesting to see what sports can really do for, for a city and, and bring it together. That was a sold-out arena last night with the Golden Knights. And you saw the, the Astros uh, stadium against the Red Sox. I mean, that, that was, I, I don't think, the, uh, they sold out game two. I don't think they sold out game one. They sold, I know they sold out game two, but game one, it was, it was packed to the brim as well. So, uh, you know, just to see a community come together like that and, and rally behind their baseball team is, is awesome. It's great. And I, I really, I really do think that they're going to, get past and they're going to make it to another world series. Um, but for the sake of city of, of the city of Houston, I hope they do it. I really do. Uh, and then we, we go over to the uh, national league side of things. And uh, yeah, we, we saw LA dominant against the Arizona diamondbacks. Uh, not a whole lot of shock there. I, I called the sweep. I, it's what I thought was going to, was going to happen. was going to play through the, um, the, the, well, actually the only, uh, series I didn't pick was the Cubs versus the Nationals, and and just strictly because I I don't know who to pick. The the Cubs are so beat up and banged up, and and the Nationals are so inconsistent and unreliable when it comes to postseason play. And and you've got Strasburger saying he he might not pitch because you know he's not feeling well in Game Four, and and then everybody's criticizing like, come on, man, you got an upset stomach and you're not going to pitch in the playoffs. And I understand the situation from both sides. We don't know how sick he actually is feeling and everything like that. But then he comes out today and he's like, no, I'm feeling much better. I'm going to pitch. No problem at all. They were supposed to have game four last night. It got delayed, uh, postponed due to rain. And so they're playing game four tonight. And it is a decisive game four. Cubs are up in that series two to one. Um, it, it, uh, you know, I, I really think the Cubs could take take this game tonight at home just with everything that's going on with Strasburg might have some, some voices in his head saying, you know, you know, hearing all the complaints and everything going on this from this sickness, this illness thing. And, uh, you know, you can see this series in tonight, potentially, potentially. And that game one is going to be Saturday. It'll be Saturday. Whoever wins uh, tonight, it'll be Saturday. If the Cubs and the nationals do not win or if, sorry, if the nationals win tonight and they force a game five, the series will go back to Washington, and they will play tomorrow night. No matter what, they they play tomorrow night if if the Nationals win. Um, again, I, I even watching the series, you had you had the Nationals show up for Game Two. You had the Cubs show up for Game. Or sorry, roll rolls reverse. You had the Nationals show up for Game One. The Cubs look like dog doo doo. You had the Cubs show up for Game Two, and the Nationals look like dog doo doo. And then in Game Three, it was it was a very close matchup, and it was it was a lot of fun. It was a fun game to watch, um, but there's no consistency with either of these ball clubs, and and I think you're in another situation with, um, with with whoever wins this series, it's not going to really matter. I think you're going to see the Dodgers handle both teams fairly easily, and uh, I I think I think you're going to see that series probably only go five games, you know. Which uh, again, I, I think. And that's max. That's max. I, I I could see that another sweep by the Dodgers, and again, I I don't I, I think that favors the Astros. I, I think the Astros are going to see a longer ALCS than than the Dodgers will see, and I think those two teams will match up in the World Series. And consistently, if you go back and look at the records, and I'll do this for next week's show, I will. I'll, I'll look up the numbers. The team that usually sits the longest going into the World Series usually plays worse. And they usually get down game one or game two. And uh, I think, so I, again, I think that favors the Astros. I, I really hope, for again, for the Astros' sake, I hope that one of these other teams, whether it be the Nationals or the Cubs, can put together a better AL or NLCS and beat the Dodgers. 
because then I think it would be almost a guaranteed win in the World Series for the Astros. So uh, we're going to wrap it up. I know uh, we're cutting this segment short a little bit. I wanted to get to some college football and some some pro talk. Um, I'm going to just quickly, briefly talk on TCU looking really hot right now, but be careful. They go to Kansas State this weekend. That could smell an upset uh, there for the Horn Frogs. Oklahoma uh, versus uh, Texas Red River rivalry should be a lot of fun this weekend. Ohio State at Nebraska, another upset opportunity. Uh, Ohio State had, had to watch the uh, uh, Michigan team get upset by Sparty last week. Don't let that happen to you, yourself, uh, Ohio. Be careful. Be careful there. NFL-wise, Steelers Chiefs, how did the Steelers respond last week after the just pitiful performance against the Bron- or against the um Oh, uh, goodness gracious, the Jaguars. Uh, Chargers at Raiders. I want to see what Carr looks like, and uh, can Chargers keep it rolling and uh, get a second win? I mean, they beat a pretty bad team. Uh, what was that bad team? Oh, yeah, that was the Giants. And the Giants are the Sunday night game, which I'm sure NBC is like, oh, great. <laughs> we got this game. Like, awesome. We were supposed to have this high-powered functioning offense, and now it looks like dog doo due to injury. So uh, Giants are at the Broncos for Sunday Night Football. And the only reason why I highlighted this game is I want to see what this offense looks like without Brandon Marshall and Odell Beckham Jr. And even if they've got Shepard in the lineup, just a completely banged up Shepard, you know, they may bring Cruz back, Victor Cruz. There's word and talk that they're in negotiation. They may, they may bring Victor Cruz back, who who is practically in a walker at this point. I mean, he's got to be. The man has been through so many leg injuries. So, yeah, we'll, we'll see. I, I'm really curious to see what that offense looks like. So stay tuned. When we come back, we're going to have soccer talk with Dick, and we're going to find out what Jake and Dick think about the U.S. soccer program here on Jake from Sports Talk, on Lone Star Community Radio, 104.5, 106.1, and worldwide on IRLoneStar.com. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Lone Star Community Radio is looking for those who are interested in hosting their own talk show. With monthly and weekly slots available in Conroe's FM 104.5, 106.1, and on IRLoneStar.com. Start your own podcast, create your first YouTube channel, and be on TV. Contact Lone Star Community Radio online at IRLoneStar.com or call the station message line at 936 647-3776 to take your first step into the radio world. Hey guys, I'm Joey Savage. Corey DLG. We are Nerd Thug Radio. Catch us every Monday from 1 to 3 and check out our website, nerdthugradio.com. We like to talk about quilting, horseback riding, and baking quiche. Actually, we don't, but we do like talking nerdy to you. That's right. Every Monday from 1 to 3 p.m., hashtag talking nerdy to you. Quick commercial break. We're hopping right back into this really, really fast. Um, I want to get as much time to talk about this uh, topic as we can. Uh, we're going to bring in the station manager here on this, my soccer expert, Mr. Dick Schistler, also the station manager, also the host of Mornings with Lone Star here on Lone Star Community Radio, as well as the Ticket Stub. Um, Thank you. Thank you. All, all those shows are really great. I, I participate in those for the most part as well. So We have a lot of fun. Yeah, we do. We enjoy those. But You know who doesn't have fun? <laughs> well, Connor and Skippy. U.S. soccer fans. Oh, no. They're not having a lot of fun. That's true. U.S. soccer fans are not very happy. I, you know, and I was watching it. I was not very happy that the, the broadcast of that was on BN Sports. Oh, Network. there was a huge discussion about that. I was very frustrated by that. But the individual, one of the individuals that was doing the postgame uh, coverage, I never, I don't know who any of those people were i don't know his name he was the middle one he was the only american the blonde on there. guy no not the blonde one he was brunette he was the only american this is great radio right now talking about these the, I, he was he was the only american the other two were, were not american um and as the only american you could see the true disappointment in the loss yeah and and i gotta imagine that the soccer fans the especially the national soccer fans here in america are just devastated yeah i mean i think the result reflected the game I mean, if you watch the game, it wasn't one of those hand of God moments or uh, an unfair win or a pitch reason or you know that kind of thing. Unfair call. People, people who watch a lot of international soccer here, they call it being concaffed because <laughs> concaf is known for screwing yeah. over teams and stuff like that. So, 
Um, I mean, they only had one slip up, and that was the Costa Rica game, where one of the, a ball they gave a goal. Uh, so was that not a goal? That I, was not a goal. I didn't so, hear the discussion. But there's about not that. video assistant refereeing in Concaf, so that's just the way it is. I mean, well, and, and that's another discussion uh, that we can we can dive into yeah. as well because they were talking about. Um, Making Concacaf basically require it, right? And and having FIFA. Well, there was the discussion when VAR was first discussed, like five years ago. It was how do we implement it and enforce it? Because there's local organizations, like for example, Major League Soccer, that's an organization. And then like in Europe, there's different leagues, and then there's also different national leagues. So FIFA is an over uh, is the international body that uh, looks over everything international soccer. Mm-hmm. And then they don't control what the MLS does. But can they control what the what CONCACAF does? Uh, yes and no. It's kind of like they had to vote. They all vote on it. So for 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 example, why we ha- had to watch it on BN Sports is because CONCACAF gives the rights to whoever's hosting, and then the, they are the ones that handle the viewership rights. So Trinidad handled the viewership rights, uh, and they chose those BN. two. Yeah, they chose those two. Uh, so that's why you couldn't watch, it, pretty much. But uh, it was, but it was, it was terrible. Like, it, oh, yeah. well, I mean, they again, they should not have played there. No, because uh, they, because of hurricanes and the rain the, and the weather. And I mean, prior to the game, they were they literally had to bring out pumps onto the field to suck water off. Yeah, and you were still hearing those pumps run during the broadcast, and it was just terrible to listen to. And it, 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 the game should have never been played there, but that's not an excuse. No, no, no. I mean, if being in a CONCAF, you should be used to playing horrible pitches or horrible fields, whatever you want to call them. But, uh, but you, as you can tell, I mean, you, you watch the game, you can just see the players just didn't care. No. And it was, that was, and I think that they've, the USA team has been plagued with that sometimes. And unfortunately, is I don't that know, a coaching thing? I think it's more of they're all thirty years old or older and they're tired. The thing, but uh, I mean, they did they did play last Thursday as well. So yes and no. I think it's I, I think you can tell who really cared. I mean, there's there's clearly a person on the field that always cares a little bit more. Oh, and, Dempsey was going at it, man. He he yeah. was he was giving it his all. Yeah, and, that, and that's one thing that a lot of people who never played professional sports don't really understand. I mean, you can't really get in the mentality of it. Why aren't these players moving? Why are they depressed? Why do they move like that? Because I mean, if you watch superstars like Messi, Messi really doesn't move a lot. <laughs> like, he doesn't defend that much. No. And he just kind of roams. And then when he's on, he's on. Yeah. And he's and that's that's just the type of soccer. That's the coaching. That's why it looks like that. Yeah. Um, uh, to t- take a step back, for all those out there that, that don't really know what, what went on yesterday, we had the uh, final day of the hexagonal CONCACAF match, matches. There was, there was multiple going on at one time. And basically, it was win, and you're in for the United States. Tie. No, it's tie, and we're qualify or we're going to the qualifying round. Win, we're in. Yeah, and then if you lost, you could they could have still made it in. It it just would have taken you know Panama to lose. Well, there was a lot of factors going into yesterday's game that could have. We basically got the worst result. Well, there was possible out of all the dice rolls. Yeah, basically, it was you couldn't have Panama win, and you couldn't have um, Honduras win. And you couldn't lose. Like, that was the number one, that can't happen, and that's what and happened. That's exactly what happened. And, and they, they just came out lackadaisical. That, that, now, that first goal, uh, in my opinion, and I'm not a soccer expert by any means, that first goal, I know it was off the, de- the defender's shin. I know the defender should have done a better job clearing it out. But Howard's got to be able to get a better read on that ball. And I know he wasn't probably expecting it, but that's maybe something where age is a factor there, you know, because yeah, he's up there. But it's too. also, I mean, it depends on the tactics and everything. I mean, how do you play those kind of balls? It, it, they're, that's coached. You know, how do, how does a team... He, but he, to me, it looked like he misread it. He, like, he, he misread the angle, and he jumped too soon. Like, if he had just taken a step back, he could have easily caught it. He didn't necessarily have to make the dive like he made it. And then the second goal... I mean, that, was, that, was, that was a wonder goal. That was a strike and a half of, of um, I don't even know the guy's name. Or Jones, Trin- I think his last name was yeah, Jones. Yeah, it was Jones, Trinidad. Uh, and hands off to, to Trinidad and Tobago. I mean, they, they played a, a great match, and, and they wanted they wanted to be spoiler. They wanted that game. They wanted that win. And you could just see it on the effort level. And Bradley Beal, I... I, he didn't, I mean, he's typically like that during the games. So. He's so frustrating to watch. Well, I mean, I think really what it reflects with soccer is uh, what's really good is a lot of people are interested in soccer than they were five years ago. And I think more and globally, I though, think, not here. 
not MLS. Well, that's what I was trying to say. Is the number the number game? If you look at it, in the past three years, the rights to broadcast the English Premier League and the German Bundesliga were purchased by Fox and NBC. Their numbers are continuously growing, and the MLS numbers haven't really changed. So I think the people here in the United States want to watch soccer, but they want to watch good soccer. Yeah. And if you watch the two different games, like an MLS game and a Premier League game, it's so different. And it is, it's really funny to see the difference. There's some teams in the MLS that are pretty good, that are like have the right coaching staff and the right system implemented, and the players themselves are really into it for that one year. But uh, really the team, the quality that MLS produces isn't there. And the future of the USA, it's going to be real interesting in the next four years what they decide to do as an infrastructure. Well, and and I don't know, as as an outsider of the soccer world, I don't know how hard this would actually be, but is there a way to just explode the whole thing, just top to bottom, just demolish it and y- start y- it? Yes and no. I mean, really the, the core issue is the devel- developmental area here in the United States. Uh, it's kind of similar to hockey if you're down further south of the of the United States – if I'm a kid, and I would say a fair th- statement is around 10 to 12, that is when development starts for a sport, if you want to get into it. If you want to get into baseball, select league is around that time, and then football, that's when it gets a little bit more developmental, and not anymore really, but I'm just saying like, if you want a kid to go to the next level, there's options around mm-hmm. uh, for parents, and not just the YMCA. Uh, soccer, is, along, with, uh, along with hockey, it's expensive to get into. If you want to get to that level, mainly because the local schools, once you hit high school, they don't really offer a good program like football because no one really – the money isn't there. Yeah. A booster club isn't there. Certain teams around the United States, yes, it's there. Like Kind of like lacrosse is really popular in the Northeast and other areas around the country. But overall, there's not – the money's not there. And then especially when you have the strength of the NCAA football – to continue the development because you have to bridge it, the age gap. Like how do you get – how do we continuously give these kids and young adults and then to proper training? So here in the United States, it's going to cost you an arm and a leg to be good. And what, uh, what, I, what I question is first, if you look at all the players in the United States and you look at the history of it, like what their history of getting involved in soccer, for example, Clint Dempsey from Nacogdoches, Texas. So oh, how on earth is Clem Dempsey from Nacogdoches? <laughs> but he, his parents had the resources to go to Dallas for their games and training every time. And they paid a lot of money to develop Clint Dempsey. So and, we need to get a system in place where we can, where we can allow the, the, the poor to necessarily thrive in, in this stuff. Well, and that's, that was my controversial thing is if you look at soccer and you can compare it to football, if you – I always wonder what the percentages of this top athlete, what percentages of those top athletes come from a poverty-stricken area or a poor economic upbringing. Yeah. And in soccer, it's huge. So, like, to give you an idea, in South America, those leagues themselves are not that good, kind of like MLS, not that good. But they produce players who don't have any development there. They're shipped over. And they're leaving young. They're, and they're, they're leaving real young. They're, they're raised. They're, they're growing up over in they're, Europe. I mean, pretty much by the, t- by the time you get age 18 to uh, 20, you can actually file to live, like, to be a citizen yeah. in most of those countries because that's how long they've been there. And uh, and I think that's the main issue here for the United States is we don't have the system, the development system from age 10 to 22 when you're in your prime, 25, yeah. to develop a good player because you either – have a parent that lived in England, and they're like, oh, you know what? We're not staying here. We're shipping them. Because that's happened. That's happened before. That's a lot of our international players aren't from here. They're born somewhere else. Born, yeah. And they uh, they got trained somewhere else, and that's what makes them the better player. And, I mean, there's a reason Pulisic is the player he is. He doesn't play here. He never played here. Yeah. He's played in Germany. And he just he plays here for the international purposes. International purposes. So it's kind of like, and like Bradley, he decided to cash in make the publicity move over here to the United States to play for a Canadian team, but he gets paid the big dollars, but he's not constantly playing the, you know, the bigger, the the better teams. Yeah, the best of the best. And we can go into this all day long, and I I know we got to wrap it up right now. But, um, no, I really want to – I really want to know what the – what the International Federation for the U.S. soccer team, what what that organization is going to do 
for the youth over the next four years? There's nothing they can do because too much money is saved saved in MLS. So the MLS won't produce a system like a relegation system where teams can advance and get knocked out. And there's just not that much movement in the MLS because they want to say they don't want to lose money. So they're not going to give that chance. So the lower leagues who have the developmental, who have those things, they're going to be stuck. They're stalemated in their leagues. So they're not going to get that influx of cash and things to help them move because that's really what helps Germany. Germany in 2000 made a huge initiative across the board in their league about getting money divided between yeah. all of the teams because – in Germany and also in England, they have a relegation system, meaning that there's 20 teams in the league, and there's a league below with 20 teams, and a league below that with 20 teams, and the top two to five, whatever they want to determine, after each season, move, move up, up into the next league, yeah. and the bottom ones move, move down. down. And so you can imagine the influx of money, and just kind of like you give a reason to want to win, and you, you so you take the risk of spending the money, you, you take the risk of hiring the right staff to try to improve the development, and also what's nice about that is it gives younger players an opportunity to be in a competitive level. We'll go play in that tier three level. Tier three, and it's going to be high It's gonna be high competitive because people want to keep going up. And yeah. so, and you, that's, you're going to have to be the best of the best. Yes, and that happens all the time, and that's why Germany's flourishing now. And now you know, we got, what is it, 17 years later, a whole generation has been born from this. Yeah. And that's why they're pretty much the greatest team right now because it they, they even out the odds for the average kid to play soccer. Yeah. And it's here we don't have, we don't we don't give the same opportunities to everybody here about that. Well, and then what it sounds like to me is is the people on top are are they they want that, but They're, they but they aren't willing. It's to not going to work American style. No, it's just not going to work that way. But good news is the FIFA is going to be changing the amount of teams that are going to be qualified so for the World Cup. So they'll be Cup. guaranteed to make it in. Basically. And so I think, yeah, there are 64 teams now instead of 32. So it's going to be Blech. it's going to be kind of a – well, I know, again, I think the – I know. We, we talked about it. And, and it's and, a good thing in the long run because more money gets into those small countries and the developmental levels might be improved or high corruption is very possible. But, but I, <laughs> I think that it it doesn't drive them to be better. So therefore, the U.S. will never get better. No. And and it, it allows us to say, okay, we made it in. That's all we need. And then we're out in the first round. So we're out in the knockout stage. Yeah, because even I was telling uh, folks yesterday, I was like, even if we made it to the World Cup, the chances of getting out of the group. Oh, are and, be, and this time around through, no, no, I'm like, yeah. and it's just going to be one of those things. So it's not going to be that exciting. And so people are talking about the stats on Fox, like, oh, they're going to lose viewers. No, they're not going to lose viewers because they would have lost viewers right when the USA gets knocked out at the very beginning. They would have made it, yeah, a, a, what, the first week, right? So Yeah, and so, I mean, I think the really the way they should look at it is they shouldn't go any back step backwards. They should not hire any old staff or any, like Bruce Arena hiring was mm-hmm. so, it was stupid. They, and, they, he needs to be gone, uh, they, and they need to get every old person, everybody over the age of 27. Because what do they have it. to lose with that? Because you have four years now to develop a, a a team and what what is there to lose is just axe all those people over 27 what do you gotta lose and then also giving those young players an opportunity to play because that's really what you do that's a constant argument in soccer is like if you're not getting playing time you got to go somewhere to get playing time yeah so how do they do friendlies how do they schedule those can we schedule like 100 friendlies a year no <laughs> no I, I mean they have to pay the players for that so they oh man we, we're at least we have women's soccer yeah I, wait, and they are awesome getting kicked out of bars and having fights I'm loving the I'm loving our U.S. women's soccer team. Yeah, those are my people. All right, guys, we're way we're way over here. We're we're having some good soccer talk, enjoying that a lot. Um, thank you, Dick. I appreciate you hopping on there, and I appreciate all my wonderful listeners for tuning in on another Wednesday. If you liked our show today, or if you missed any part of it, and you want to know what we were talking about earlier in the show, go check it out on the podcast version on. Google Play and iTunes, and check out the video version on YouTube or Our City TV in the greater Montgomery County area. Thank you, guys. Love you all. We'll see you next Wednesday at 1 p.m. You are listening to Lone Thanks for checking out this podcast of Lone Star Community Radio, Montgomery County's community radio station. If you enjoyed this recording, make sure to check out our past shows online at IRLoneStar.com or their respective video or podcast formats on YouTube, Google Play, or iTunes. If you have any questions regarding the show, either it being about sponsorships or questions for the host, contact the station manager at D-I-C-K at IRLoneStar.com or call the station at 936-647-3776. 
This show was recorded in downtown Conroe, Texas at the Lone Star Community Radio Studio. And Lone Star Community Radio reserves all rights to this recording and images. <laughs>